Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the ketogenic diets and and I'm mean, like, how do I say this without pissing everybody off? <laughs> Go um, ahead and piss everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the same way that not all plant-based diets are made equal, it is the same with not all ketogenic diets are made equal and not i'm mean, like there is the, the 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 super high fat people and the not so high fat people and um, what i have seen in all of the groups that i have been to is that many people go to keto because of the false claim that you can eat as much fat as you want and you're still gonna lose a bunch of weight can you please talk about that Got it. Okay. So a lot of people have like this magical view of keto because they just literally don't understand that the body is a, just a strictly mechanical machine that is dealing with food mechanically. So what it, you have to understand is that ketosis is just all about not eating glucose. So your, your body has this little seesaw, you're always burning either glucose, fat, or some combination of the two. The more glucose or carbs you eat, the more you're burning glucose. The less glucose or carbs you eat, the more you're burning fat. Ketosis is simply about just not eating a lot of carbs. So you're basically having to burn fat because that's all you've got left. You, you don't have to ever eat any fat and you will be in ketosis. You don't have to do anything specific with protein more or less, and you'll be in ketosis. Ketosis is just about not eating glucose, so you're predominantly burning uh, fat. But what people also need to understand is every single bit of fat that you eat is immediately just stored in your fat cells. Like you, you literally ingest fat, it's broken down into triglycerides. Those go straight to your fat cells. Now, um, you might burn a little bit of it on the way when it's, you know, in your bloodstream. But statistically speaking, almost all ingested fat is become stored fat, where it's then slowly released, you know, days or weeks or months later or never if you're overeating. Um, and you might burn it later <clears throat> if you're if you're tapping into your stored body fat. So that's, I think, the part that people don't understand when they get magical about keto. What they don't realize is every bit of fat you're eating is immediately stored as body fat. And it's stored very passively. It doesn't provide you with a lot of satiety. Um, it takes hours and hours and hours to digest this fat. You know, 12 hours later, it's ending up in your adipocytes. And it hasn't improved your stamina or given you much satiety. Or it hasn't really, it's not ergogenic. It hasn't helped you with your workout or... It hasn't really done anything except, you know, occupied your stomach transiently and then ended up in your fat cells way, way down the road, typically 12 hours later, where it's actually making you slightly more insulin resistant and raising your glucometer the next morning. And people just don't even understand how that works. No, and that's and super so, confusing. Right, right. There's this huge delay between when you eat fat and when it shows up in your fat cells and uh and so people just don't get it there's a big disconnect there and i think that's the problem with keto like the, i love the carb restriction of keto it's amazing um like everyone should be at least uh in some light ketosis at some part of their day when they wake up in the morning or something like that that's i think that's excellent but uh, what I don't like is just eating all fat, all the fat, you know, like adding fat, refined fat, thinking that you have to eat more fat to burn more fat. That's like totally not true. And I think that really got abused over the past few years. And that's why that's why keto has stalled out so, so hard. You're like, you know, if you do look at the Google search trends, keto is really nosediving right now because everybody on the planet went on keto instantly dropped 20 pounds and then just stalled out hard because yeah. then it just comes down to fat balance. Uh, if you eat the same grams of fat as you burn every day, um, you're not going to lose anything ever, period, ever again. And so that's where everyone's at on keto. Now, let's. what, what about the carnivores? How, how do you like those that, that camp? Okay, so <clears throat> there's some great things about carnivore. Like when you're eating properly raised animal products, you're just instantly getting an amazing protein to energy ratio. You're getting an amazing nutrient density. Animals 
concentrate minerals and bioaccumulate minerals. So you get way higher um, uh, minerals and micronutrients in animals. So it's, it's great. Like right off the bat, just eating an animal is amazing. You get all this protein, all these minerals, all these micronutrients. Um, so your average person going from a standard American diet where, you know, 60% of ca human calories on earth come from wheat, rice, and corn. Um, you know, all of our, you know, the biggest contributors to our calories are like, uh, grains and sugar. And so the second you get off of that, it's like an instant win button. Like you're just automatically going to be better off. Uh, I think that we get into trouble though, when we, uh, when we get really religious about it and we're like, oh, the only reason I'm doing well is because I'm pure carnivore. And then, and then how am I going to justify that? Oh, I think all plant foods are evil. They're all trying to kill you. They're all filled with toxins. Uh, if getting rid of some plants is good, getting rid of all plants is the best. And then you oh. want to be literally pure carnivore. And then you want to be raw carnivore. And then you just end up eating like a really restrictive diet, which is, the problems with that is it's not very sustainable and you probably end up with micronutrient deficiencies and you really want to you want to be on the least restrictive diet possible because you're just going to have a broader micronutrient profile and you're going to have a lot more long-term um, sustainability so that's the problem with getting too religious about carnivore and i think a lot of people um you know they have success from it they get super religious about it and I don't know how helpful that is because you've got someone else on the other side of the earth who got amazing success on a plant-based diet and they're super religious about that. And now you have this eternal war and it's just not helping a lot of people out. I, I have a problem when people get that, like, that religious about it. And, mm -hmm. then, and then it's like the same person, it's the same character and it's the same proselytism but in the other direction like like here in germany the the plant-based um, movement is very very strong because the germans are very into environment i mean are very environmentally friendly so they have been led to believe that eating animals is like bad for the planet and uh, eating plants is good why but that's the way that we go because i have seen such a tendency to to pull away from normal animal foods to towards forcing people into just eating plant-based. But then I have seen something very concerning that is that they are feeding children meat or animal, animal protein only once a week or twice a week. And I don't know how good that is. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've seen some estimates where if, if you just flipped a switch and everyone was plant-based instantly, uh, our protein percentage would go down. We'd eat an extra 300 calories per day. Uh, we'd have more micronutrient deficiencies. And I think it, that's just automatically a slight downgrade. And, and I'm a little biased because I actually think that carnivore, if you started with the standard American diet and just instantly made everyone carnivore, you'd see a slight upgrade in protein mm -hmm. percentage and micronutrient sufficiency, and you'd see a slight downgrade if everyone was plant-based. Uh, so I don't like the religiosity on either side, but I'm even more nervous about the, the plant-based than the animal-based. Me too. And when it comes to children, it bothers me. It bothers right. me. That's terrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually extremely against uh, hereditary religion in general, like making your kids be a certain religion is, I think, Awful. And I, I'm extremely against pushing your uh, dietary religion on your kids as well. And so, yeah, that really, I don't, I don't really like that. I think that that's probably a bad idea. I actually don't like it when um, uh, religious carnivores are pushing that on their kids or religious uh, vegans are pushing that on their kids. And I, I might be more sensitive to that because I had some, a little bit of, you know, this religious abuse type thing growing up. Um, so I'm, you know, extra sensitive to that, but I think we should probably try to avoid that when it comes to our kids. Yeah. It's the vegan cats. I'm like, that's the worst. That's the very worst. That is the, oh yeah. my God. Oh yeah. Vegan cats. I know this yeah. should be criminal. This is terrible. 
that is criminal absolutely mm -hmm.